So previously, we looked at creating the student DTO. There are some caveats that you need to understand are important. When you use the student DTO, you need to make sure within your DB context here. So DB context class. So in this instance, we created our school context class that is derived from DB context. It will have an on model creating method. You need to override that method over here. And then using the model builder entity and the name of the DTO, you need to add has no key. If you don't do this, your code will not work and crash. So another thing to recognize where DTO is, because it has no key, it is not tracked by entity framework. So you cannot go and make changes to the data within your DTO, such as the student name or age. You cannot change it. If you change it, then those changes will not be saved because this is not full entity framework class. It is not a DB set as such. So you cannot use it to update anything. In order for it to be DB set, you need to make Make sure that it's actually declared as a DB set over here. For example, we got DB set for student here and teacher here. Now we could convert this to a DB set, so that would be simply by changing this to by changing it to students, and then this is what it would be. So if you have this over here, then you know this is a DB set. So with the DB set, if you do a save changes method here, then this would save the changes. But when you do a set over here, so here the, with the student DTO, what would happen is when you do save changes, it will not actually make any relevant changes to the name of the student because this is not a DB set. This is, isn't a full entity framework object, so it doesn't track changes back to the database. So this and save changes here has no effect because essentially you are just chaining the plain old C sharp object and you are not chaining an entity framework tracked object. So I hope this makes sense in terms of limitations of a data transfer object with the entity framework.